Please introduce yourself to the camera, please. Sorry. Hi, I'm Tajinder Singh from Corner Shop. Uh, how do you like Japan so far? Uh, it's been very friendly, very hospitable. The places that we've seen have been uh, been very good. Yeah. How's it compared to uh, back home, England? Um, well, it's been a very enthusiastic response, um, but very very similar. I was surprised how similar the the towns are and the development is, and uh, and the shows have been received pretty similarly as well. Uh, um, since it's your first time coming over to Japan, there's probably a bunch of people that that are um, know you really well, but uh, there's probably a, a lot of people that still they've heard Corner Shop the name, but don't exactly know what kind of band it is. Can you like sort of give us a brief, really brief uh, story or history of how you guys came about? Uh, well, we started when me and Ben were studying and my brother was in the band then and we had a drummer and we started with an independent label on Ouija Records and that was about five years ago. Since then we've, we've um, we changed the drummer, my brother left, we've got more instrumentation. We all, we've always had the sitar player there as well as Anthony Safri and uh, we're using more technology and we've also got more instruments and we've got a percussionist now as well with what we have had for the last three years and um, that brings us to the present. So. Which is Born for the Seventh Time, mm -hmm. the album, the new album. Um, that was a huge hit, like worldwide, and pretty much uh, basically brought you guys into the mainstream. Uh, were you surprised that it was such a hit in the media as well as the audiences, or were you, when you're writing it and recording it, do you think it was going to be a success? Not really. We don't really think about what's going to happen when we're recording it, but. Uh Certainly, we're relieved that it was a hit, and certainly we've always had problems as as a band in terms of logistics uh, and staying together. And certainly, we were going to give up if the album didn't do well, and we said that. So we were quite relieved that it has so, done well. Thankfully, yeah. because it did well, you guys are still together, yeah. and there will be more and more albums to come. Um, yes. yes <laughs> You guys went on tour uh, last year, pretty much America, a lot, of, a lot in America, right? And how do you guys come across in America to the American audiences? Because you guys are pretty unique, you know. Um, I think we come across really well. I think they see us a bit of a breath, breath of fresh air, and it's been since we've been going over, it's gone down really, really well. Even in sort of heavy rock rosters like Lollapalooza when we played there. That was pretty. Was that good? That was excellent, yeah. Part of the weeks uh, just it was really enjoyable for us. Thank you. 
first heard the album, the new one as well, I was like really surprised because there's so many instrumentals. Do you guys set out to write instrumentals, or is it more of a case of this song can do without vocals because it's really good? Um, yeah, it sort of varies. What we wanted to do was we wanted to keep a lot of variety with this album, but we wanted it to be different to the previous album. And in the previous album, we got things to gel by having cross cross uh, segues between songs. Um, whereas with this one, we uh, we we were going to do segues, but we wanted definite stops between the songs to make it different. And uh, s s little segues developed into instrument instrumentals and. Um, and that's why there's quite a lot of them. Yeah. Okay, well let's check out a video. Okay. Brimful of Asha. hard to describe, you know, because I, I've never like really heard of a kind of a, it is a rock band, sort of, you know, I would say it's a rock band just because it's got bald, but it's, um, you use the sitar and all that stuff, and there's a lot of Asian or Indian influence in your music. Is that um, a natural thing that you, that comes across, or is it something that you want to show your roots? Or you want to show what you know, push the Indian or Asian kind of thing. So, mm. is it something that you think about, or is it just completely natural? It just comes out when you write. It's pretty intuitive. I, the first music I was into was uh, Punjabi folk music, or devotional music, devotional music, Sikh devotional music, or wedding songs, or Hindi music. And so, it's always been there, and it's pretty intuitive. Uh, um, because I, I saw the set upstairs when you guys were rehearsing, a couple of your members are sitting down. And it's not your average stage set. You know? No, I think that's good though, we try to get away from the rock formula right. and encores and even talking between songs. We try to make it a bit different, make people think a bit, um, which they're very low to do. They're just not really into thinking. It's a bit of a shame. Really.
a corner shop. Where do you get your influences? I can't. For me, I can see the Indian influences in your music, but I can't see like the average Brit pop influence. Are you guys influenced by Brit pop or、no. at all? Or? Well, Brit, Brit, Brit pop is a crock, and、uh, it's just nonsense.、Um, No, we just listen to lots of different music. We're avid record collectors, and we like to take good pointers from good music. And it's good that people have to guess and people have to work at it. And unfortunately, a lot of well, some people are too lazy to to want to do that. Well, they need、uh, it on a plate. <laughs> thanks for、uh, coming today. Sakakona Shopper!